Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are going to work on completing our gorgeous lilac lace top. Ah, too exciting, far too exciting for me. And today when you are finished with this tutorial you will be finished with your top as well. Now if you are joining us new and you would like to do part one of this top um, and that's just creating your fronts and your backs to about say there. And if you would like to do part one, then I will leave a link to part one in the description box down below and you can complete part one. Then join us back here and finish off the rest. Now, I believe the rest is from here to there, roughly. You're doing, I can't remember what I did now. It's been so long ago since I started. Uh, you're doing the um, top edge there. You're sewing your side seams and then you're doing a little bit of a collar. Yeah, not a big one, just a small collar. And then you're doing a border row on the base of your top just to, to um, tighten up that area a little bit and get rid of a lot of the chains that we had there, big chain gaps. Plus it does look pretty, it gives it a tiny little edge. Not a massive one, but a tiny little edge. Now I'm not going to talk too much, but I just wanted to let you know from start to finish I used roughly um, 465 metres. Uh, that's what I use, but I forgot my ease. Remember that? So if you are um, using your ease, you would probably use roughly 485, 500 gram, uh, 500 grams, 500 meters, or in grams, I used, I should have used 200 grams, and I used 189 grams. Okay, if you are working on grams like I do. All right. So your top, if you're joining us new, would like to know how much yarn you will need. This is an extra large top without the ease, right? But with the ease, I would have used 500 meters or that many yards right there, okay? So that's that, or 200 grams, yeah? You will need, for today's tutorial, you will need your hook that you started off with, and that was the five millimeter hook. You will need your scissors, you will need your sewing needle, and you will need, I don't know, four to eight to 12 stitch markers, depends on how you use them. Now, if you don't have stitch markers, you can use safety pins, or you can even use a piece of thread and just pull that uh, lighter thread or a different color thread in the stitch that we're working in, if that helps you. And I'm not gonna talk anymore, guys, because yes, like most of my tutorials, they do go a long time. And the reason they do is because I like to be thorough in almost every stitch or every second stitch at least, or, you know, when I say head off and finish off the row exactly the same way. So I do like to be thorough. Thank you for watching and good luck creating part two, your final part of your gorgeous lilac lace top. Alrighty, guys, here is one side already complete and I've done my shoulder bits there. Okay, now this is where I said to you head off on your own, do your 12 rows and get to this measurement right here or whatever length that you wanted. I did ask you no matter what you did to end off on a row with your four double crochets. Yes, your two there and your two in your um, chain two space. All right, I did ask you to do that, so hopefully that's what you've done. Now, you probably can see this little stitch mark here. I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the idea is to give yourself 7.5 centimeters or whatever inches that is. I'll just pop the inches up there now. <laughs> I forgot to get the inches, so there we go. Um, from the top to the top of your shoulder. So from your, that's um, the, just beneath your shoulder blade, and that's the top of your shoulder. Then, you can measure up from there down to the base and that's how long you want yours to be. So really all you need to do is measure this top from there all the way to here and now you're going to give yourself 7.5 centimeters or those inches right there um, and that is how long your top will be. Now if you find you don't like that length when we get to the very top you can go ahead and do another couple of rows. So it's no problem there, all right? And I'll talk about that once we get there. In the meantime, grab both your pieces. We're working on one for now, and you can do the same for the other side once you've done this side here. Count your clusters across this way, all right? So starting from this one here or there, whatever, you can go from there, one, two, three, all the way across to your last cluster there. And when I say cluster, I mean these little groups of two. So count your two all the way across, get to the last two, 
and that's how much you should have. Now, if you played your cards right, you should have an even amount of clusters across. If you are odd, if there's an odd amount of clusters, don't stress. I'll show you what to do with yours, all right? But you really should have an even amount if we've done the pattern right, all right? So what you do, fold your little top in half, right? You don't have to. What you need to do is divide that measurement in half. So what you came up with, so let's say you came up with 20 of these little sets across. You need to find 10 across this way. That's your 10th from there to there. That's your 10th from there to there. Pop your stitch marker in and you're done. Now that stitch marker goes right flat bang in the middle of your top, if that helps. Now if you have an odd number, pop your stitch marker in the middle of your two stitches. But you should actually have an even number. So if you've got an even number, pop it in the space. So you should have your 10 across this way and your 10 across this way if that's what you came up with. Mine's a little bit more than 10 because, you know, some of us are bigger than others. <laughs> I'm not saying anything else. All right, so, that, so that's what you do, yes? Now, from here, what I want you to do... Now, I know I said we're not working on um, certain measurements, and that's true, but in this case, you need to have some sort of measurement across. For me, being an extra large, being bigger, <laughs> I found I needed to have more clusters separated, okay? So for a large to extra large, this is what I would like for you to do. Now that is uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Count your five clusters across. We'll do that nice and close so you can see what I did there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, yeah? Grab a stitch marker and pop it one, two, three, four, five, at the space after the fifth one. Pop your stitch marker there. If you are large to extra large, by the way, yeah, you're going to do exactly the same to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, pop your stitch marker in there. All right, now that's if you are large to extra large, but if your top, because I know some people would have done the top to suit their measurements, right? Now, if you're a small, there's no way this is going to be enough for your sleeves, yeah? So you need to come over by one more cluster set. So you count four across, four across. So small to medium, four across. Large to extra large, five across. Extra large or extra large L, or what is it? Extra large one to extra large three, just go one more across. Now remember, this top is relatively loose, so it should be loose on you. But me being large... <laughs> bigger <laughs> I had to count my five across all right now just stay focused on your measurements now this is going to be your neck edge but not just from here to here you're going to have let me show you you're going to have your shoulders your little shoulder uh, patch there right to the top so your neck edge is really going to be that big so if you're thinking that that's only your neck edge it doesn't seem big enough Remember, you have this part of your neck edge to go as well. All right, so just stay focused on that. All right, so don't worry too much about complete measurements here because we will mess around with the collar once we've done. In the meantime, let's get started. Remember, I asked you not to cast off your... Well, I hope I did, but if I didn't and you've cast off, just <laughs> where you cast off, uh, add your next... Um, I'll start again. Uh, pop your hook in, yes, uh, and just add a thread there if you've cast off. So what we're going to do, so that you are aware of what's happening, you're still going to be increasing on the sides. You won't be increasing once you get to that stitch marker, but you will be increasing on the side only. And I'll explain that to you with the other side as well. All right, I think we turned and then we chained three. One, two, three double crochet into that same stitch that you are in a leg saw double into your next double into your next you know this part and double into your next so really what you should have is your one two three four five and then two double crochets into the first space making it seven double crochets across which was our pattern from there. So it's seven, two, four, seven, okay? Now, 
continue along the way with our pattern of and you know this chain one and two and two double crochets in every space so I'm going to pop this on fast but what I want you to do is keep doing your pattern all the way across until you get to that first stitch marker and off we go chain one and two and before we go into that stitch with a stitch marker this is what you should have now I'm not sure how many you have across so don't judge mine because mine is a different measurement to yours okay but you should be just before your stitch marker which is right there and in that stitch marker space you're only putting one double crochet so just do a normal double crochet like so take out your stitch marker you don't need it there anymore all right so from here you're going to turn your work now okay because this is now the shoulder part all right we're going to leave all of this and we're going to flip our work like we would normally pretending like it's at the end of the row yeah then you chain let's get close your three like normal one two and three all right and what you're going to do yarn over your hook you pop two double crochets in that space so one and two okay pattern chain one and two into the next space and you know this part one two and off we go i'm going to pop this on fast for you chain one and two because you know this part and off you go you should be right here at the end where you've got your one two three four five six seven now you know what to do here because you've been doing it all along so you're in your space you skip one and two you jump into your third with a double crochet and a double crochet into your next chain one and two skip one and two and you're jumping into the top of your chain like so with a double crochet and another double crochet all right because we do need to still increase on the shoulders all right so what you have right now is that all right now before we continue just take out that middle stitch marker because it's only going to confuse you in there all right we'll leave that one there because we need that for later all right so you've taken out your middle stitch marker and now we're going to do our very next row. Once again, with the next row, you're going to turn like normal. Turn, turn, turn like normal. All right, and you're going to chain up your three. One, two, and three. All right, okay. Now, what did you do when you had your two? You just did a normal double crochet in that first stitch like so. And you did your two double crochets in your space one and two chain one and two pattern to the end all right pattern to your next space your last space sorry not your next your last and off we go guys I'm sorry I just got crochet happy and forgot to stop um all right so we've got our last space there and just like normal we're going to be popping our two double crochets in there one and two and then you'll be putting a double crochet in your next two double crochets so one in your first one in your next right there 
and you still have the chain three here. Now I've been forgetting to put stitch markers in, but it's always that top chain or the chain with your stitch markers if you've been using yours. So I'm going to use it on the next row. I can't believe I forgot. Isn't that interesting? All right, so now you've done three rows and this is what it should look like. Oh, let's try that again. That's better. So that's what it should look like. It should look higher than the rest of your row. Okay. So now we are going to turn our work like normal. Okay, like normal. Chain one, two, and three. All right, so not here, but right into that very next stitch, you're going to pop a double crochet in there. One, and then one into your very next, two, and then you chain one and two, skip one and two, pattern across. All right, super duper easy. Chain one and two. And off we go, I'll pop this on fast for you. my two double crochets in there like normal remember what we do here this is the um, the shoulder seam area so you still have to continue your pattern before we had the four so what happens after the four we do that very big patch there which is seven yeah so one two a double crochet into your next three one into your next four one into your next five one into your chain, six, and same into the chain with another one, seven. Oops, I was ready to chain, was not. <laughs> All right, so now you are flipping your work like normal, and you know what you do here, chain one, two, and three. In the same stitch, you pop a double crochet, Chain one and two, skip the first two stitches, jump into your third. And your fourth with a double crochet of each. And I'm so far away, I do apologise. So what I did was I did my chain three, double crochet in the same stitch, chain two, skip two double crochets, then put two double crochets, one in each stitch, chain one and two skip the two double crochets and we are back into our pattern once again let's pop this on fast and i'll meet you at the end of the row Okay, so we are at the end of this row. And so what we do here is put a yarn over our hook, pop our last two double crochets in there, or one and two. Now, because this is the inner edge of our neck, we're not increasing. So just pop a double crochet into your next stitch, one into your next stitch, and one into the chain stitch right there. And now you, whoops, turn your work like normal. Come on, Mary, get it right. <laughs> you could do this. Look at this. Oh, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> I'm getting very nervous. All right. So you know what you're doing here? You're going to chain one, two, and three. Now this edge is always the same now. So you've got your three, five, three, five. So now it'll be the three. The neck edge is always the same. All right, so you've got your chains there. Go a double crochet into your next stitch. One into your next. And you should have two double crochets left there. Yep. Chain one and two. Jump into the pattern. Right into the next space like so. With your two double crochets. Chain one, two. 
and yes straight into your next space all right it's super easy now let's just oh yarn chicken oh, i'm so scared i'm so scared <laughs> you love it i'm so scared <laughs> chain one and two it's not going to make it i know it's not <laughs> I, I kind of know it's not well, there you go anyway so let's um oh no not yet i was going to say let's pop it on fast but look at that it's not too bad i got that undone All right, let's pop this on fast till we get to the end of the row. Chain one and two. I'm so scared. Look at this. Give me one second. Sorry about that, guys. I had a knot. <laughs> to take it undone all right so you are skipping your two double crochets jumping into your last space with two double crochets and into your next stitch you are popping a right there popping a double crochet into your chain pop your double crochet all right so what you have now so far is that all right, grab your little measuring tape. Start from the row that you started working on, which let me blow that up for you, is right there. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six rows, yeah? For me, six rows up makes 7.5 centimeters. Or, I forgot the inches, let's pop those over there, inches. All right, so 7.5 centimeters, or that many inches all right so now if I had to measure my top it would fit me all the way across the length of my top from my shoulder down to how far I want it to go near my waist or near the hip or below the hip wherever you want your top to go it should measure if it doesn't and it's too if it's too big just take one row off okay if it's too small do another couple of rows and we will be doing a little bit of a border on the edge anyway the neck edge so that will uh, fill up that neck area and we can talk about that when we get to the neck edge section all right but for now oh look at this i want it yarn chicken yay <laughs> you like that for now all you're doing is chaining one or pulling up a loop giving your work a cut to make sure you're happy before you cut it now, where is your um, stitch marker? There. Now, if I remember correctly, before, we had our work like that. Where we started before was here, yes? We turned our work and we went across that way, yeah? But we were going this way, yes? So now you just go right over to your stitch marker there. You'll be starting this section differently. Pop your hook in that space. The whole space where your stitch marker is. Take out your stitch marker. Grab your new thread. All right, and just pop it on the hook. Pull the loop through, just get your little tail edge there. And passing it forward chain one two and three all right now just come across to your other side we were crocheting this way so we did a chain two and then our double crochet in there so we've got a space next to our chain three the starting chain so you need to have a space here let's bring that little tail at the back for now to have a space it would mean another two chains so chain well before you do grab your stitch marker this will be tricky for you later just pop your stitch marker in that Ooh, top chain there laxor then you chain one and two skip two and two double crochets in your next space chain one and two and two into your next you know this part this is pattern all the way across let's pop it on fast for you until we get to the end of the row and off we go all 
All right, guys. Whoops. Oh, too far away. All right, where you should be is here. You should have your two double crochets in that last chain space. And you're going to continue across the row with double crochets. That's your third one. Your fourth. Fifth. And in your top chain, or your stitch marker if you're using them. Six. I'm being very naughty. I haven't been using them in this tutorial, have I? Seven. I do apologise, guys, to our new bits. <laughs> Alright, so that's what you have. Okay, now you're going to flip your work like normal. Chain all one, two and a three. And remember, this is your shoulder edge, so you have to continue your increase now with your increases remember before you when you have your seven in this row here you've only got your two so you've got your chain uh three there do a double crochet in the same stitch that you are in chain one and two skip one and two and double crochet into the next two one and two chain one and two Skip two, double crochet into the next two. Chain or one and two. And pattern all the way across. Until you get to your last uh, big space at the end, that very first space that we did, and I'll meet you there in a moment. guys so I did my last two double crochets and then I did a chain two in that space we're going to do our two double crochets one and two oops let's try that again take two for two <laughs> all right now we are going to pop in our chain right there where we put our stitch marker a double crochet like so take out your stitch marker now Oops. Ah. All right. And what it should look like, pretty much the same as your other side right there. Let's just put them together so you can see what I mean. That was where we started off. It looks a little weird, right? That was where you started off your chain there, your chain two. And it does look a little weird, but it does sort itself out once you've complete, continue your next rows. All right. So with your next rows, what are you going to do? I'm going to firstly move this little thread out of the way. All right, with our next row, oh, with our next row, what we're going to do is flip our work like normal. Chain one, two, and three. You can be, you know, pop your stitch markers in, guys. Put a double crochet into your first and into your second. Two into the space. chain one and two pattern across all right so that's super easy yeah i'm gonna pop this on fast for you and off we go crochet happy again all right now in that last space there you are treating this edge like an increased edge because this is your shoulder section so you're going to pop your two double crochets in your space one and a two one into the next stitch and one into your chain top chain that is and it's like that your seven, your two, your four, your seven, your two, your four. Turn your work, chain one, two, three, and you're doing your seven across. So you're doing a double crochet in the first chain, the same chain that you're in. And then a double crochet into your next and your next and your next. Whoops next and then 
two into the space. One and two. So you should have your one, two, three, four, five, six, and your chains make seven. All right. All right, chain one and two. And let's pop this on fast until we get to the end of this row. Let's try that again. <laughs> and off we go. And double into your uh, last space right there. Chain one and two. Double crochet into the next one, two, and your chain space right there. Well, your chain stitch, not your chain space, get it right, Mary, the top stitch right there. All right, so what you have is your one, two, three, four rows. Now we have another two rows to do. So what we're going to do, once again, is flip your work. Talk about yarn chicken once again. <laughs> I had little tiny bits of um, this yarn all cut up in pieces. I don't know what I used it for in the past, but there you go. All right, so from here we are chaining one, two, and three. Oops, I didn't flip that work. <laughs> Double crochet into your next stitch. <laughs> Double into the, I tell you what, double into the next. <laughs> it's too late in the day for me. Two into the next space. Yes, so you should have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Each second row, this is on the neck edge, you should have a three, five, three, five, and so on. Okay? One and two, two into the space, one and two, two into your next space, one and two, and you know the rest, let's pop it on fast. I just got crochet happy again. Um, get to the last space there, guys. Skip one and two. Well, you do your chain two. Skip one and two. Pop. You know this part here because it's the same in every row. It's the edge of our shoulder seam, yeah? So you pop two in there. Oh, I'm so nervous with my yarn chicken. Chain one and two. Skip one and two. And into that top chain, you are putting two double crochets one and two chain one and two and three i'm sorry turn your work chain three <laughs> let's take that undone because this is the second time i've done it and it's going to make my work different and i don't want it to be different so turn your work oh, yarn chicken this is our last row anyway hey get excited it's our last row well, it is for me. Okay, so chain three, or one, two, and uh, three. And we are skipping that stitch, jumping straight into the next stitch, like so. Double crochet into the space. One, double crochet into the space. Two, yes. Chain or one and two. Pattern all the way across your row. All right, so off we go, and I'll meet you there in a moment. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row, chain one and two. <sighs> Don't you love it? <laughs> I'm going to leave this in guys because I'd like you to see this. This is my last row. That is my thread. 
unbelievable alrighty guys I just redid that row again got to my chain two <laughs> don't you love it okay so now you are skipping like normal one and two and you are popping your double crochet into the third stitch <laughs> still laughing about it um, into the fourth and then one into the chain just pull up a loop no more just pull your loop up for a minute and have a look make sure you have six rows one two three four five six which is what i have okay on the other side i have one two three four five six all right or at least make sure they are even so if you did seven rows make sure you've got seven on both sides okay they must be even obviously um all right so what we're going to do here is pull up a loop give your work actually you know what you can do you can pull up a very big loop because you're going to crochet i'm sorry you're going to sew your shoulder seams together all right so just a nice big tail i don't know double the length of that that's probably too much but it's better than having too much than mm, having not enough like you saw before <laughs> with yarn chicken this is, it is too much but anyway all right so what we're going to do is sew that along there along to the other top so don't worry about that for now all right so what we're going to do now is you've got one piece yeah when you do your second side meet me back here and we will join these two pieces together at the shoulder seams all right so go ahead and do that next piece and i will meet you back here in a moment all righty guys what you should have is two pieces like that all right and right here you can see the two tails that you started off with now if you've weaved yours in just find out the part where you started off and that's where we're going to work all right now um okay let's try and find the right sides to the wrong sides come back up here and this will tell us what the right sides to the wrong sides is all right now i have an extra tail over here because you know you know that very last row <laughs> i played yarn chicken and lost all right so what you would end up with is two tails this way and two tails this way yeah exactly the same now this is the right sides of your top, right? Which means that's the right side of your top as well, yeah? So bring it forward, take off this one and turn it around and then put it back. So what you have is the right sides facing each other, yes? Now you're going to grab your sewing needle and we are going to start by sewing across the top now. So, now whichever longest thread you have, just grab, um, I think I'm just going to grab this one here anyway, because you'd probably be on the same section that I was. And really all you're doing is, I'm just flipping it around so you can see it, all right? This is where we finished off just now, yeah? All right, so really all you're doing is, Popping your stitch, your needle back in that stitch, like so. And just pulling your thread through there, very gently. Then you're going to the opposite side. Now, this is your first stitch. The two loops on your opposite side there is your first stitch. So pull that through there, like so. Then you're going to go through let's just separate it a bit that's the the chains we just went through you're gonna go through the back loop of the back two loops there of your second stitch and find the two loops there oh that's the chains we don't want that the two loops there oh gosh let's try that again the two loops there of your second stitch on both sides so just pull that through yeah then you go to your third stitch through those two loops right there third stitch on your opposite side through there and off we go now 
Here's the tricky part because we've got chains, but you need to get through both sets of chains. So there's your first chain. Let me just separate that for a minute. There's your first chain on that side, yeah? And your first chain on, oh, on this side's real tricky because it's fairly tight. And I can't see it through the lens, which is worse. There. First two loops on top, little tiny loop on the bottom, like so. And there you go. Making sure it's, you know, tight enough. All right, and then you're going through that second loop or the second chain, two loops on top, one loop on the bottom, go through the second chain on the other side. Real tricky, but you can do it. I have faith in you. <laughs> I have faith. All right, so that's fairly pretty much what it is you need to do. That's it. So the next one is actually the stitch. So stitch on the first one through the stitch on the first one on the opposite side and away we go one more time one stitch there one stitch on the opposite side and pull that through now we're doing our chains again two there and two in oh so tricky this one is very tricky you know what you might like to do pull them through first might help you doing that and then you can actually go through the chains by moving it this way and you can see the chain better that way. That's the only way I know how to do it. So I've moved it around. You don't need to, it's just a lot easier for me to do that, especially because I'm looking through the lens of the camera. All right, so I'm not gonna sit here and let you watch me do that. Your job now is to go away. I'm sorry, head off on your own, don't go away. Head off on your own, do the rest of this row and get to the very last stitch here uh, we'll go through the, the last three stitches. Get through that second last stitch or third last stitch and I will meet you there once you're done. All right, go and do that row right there and I'll meet you there in a moment. All righty guys, here we are at the end of the row. Now, just a quick heads up, I just put my thread through that middle stitch. I should have waited till I just got so happy. So pop the <laughs> your normal thread through that second last stitch i'm sorry let's say third last yeah go into your second last remember the two loops in both sides yes now you know i've got a lot of threads here because we had yarn chicken issues thank you <laughs> oh, well done mary and then go into your very last stitch oh, one side and the top three loops i'm sorry let's try two loops on the other side in those chain three stitches and i split it didn't i let's try that there we go all right so do that there when you get to this section here you've got a lot of threads that you're going to have to weave in but we won't worry about that for now when you get to the section here i want you to actually go back so you're going over that stitch just go back into that stitch there back into the stitch when you pull it through don't go all the way go like that halfway well not even almost to the end grab your needle pop it through the loop and what this is going to do right now is give it a knot right there then I want you to turn your piece to the side is this too high it is turn your piece to the side you're going to weave that in through the stitches that you just made now I've got a lot of threads which is annoying but you're going to weave that through the top of the stitches that you just sewed across. So just find some stitching there right on top. And just like I'm splitting the yarn here, I'm not actually going through stitches. I'm literally splitting the yarn. Now you can have a look for the needle in the front and I can't see it at all because it's going through top stitches. So just pull that thread through like so. Mm -hmm. You have to bear with me guys, I was carrying some heavy shopping before and look at my hand shaking <laughs> this is what happens use a trolley guys <laughs> don't use your bags um <laughs> i just thought it was smart you know oh i don't need a trolley i don't need a trolley and then all of a sudden i'm carrying 50 million items which i can't carry <laughs> so my hands are all shaky all right so there we go and that's it that is it my dears pull that through there i'm no i'm lying because you've got to go back the other way turn your piece around find some stitches back the other way and weave in you don't have to over fuss now because you've gone through 
once you've already knotted it once so just go back the other way I'm not even going to go all the way I'm just going to leave it inside the shirt a little bit there's the edge and I've left it inside so if it does come undone which it shouldn't because we really really weave in here don't we we really split those yarns if it does come up it'll come undone it'll come undone inside your top and not outside but it shouldn't because we split yarn which is a very dangerous thing to do oh I forgot to mention guys before you split yarn and, and weave in check your work and make sure it's correct because if you split your yarn and then you realize the whole thing's wrong to get this undone you're going to have to start cutting and that's not good yeah now we have to weave in these ends real quickly let me show you one again you know what you're doing because we've just weaved in one end but that's pretty much what I want you to do the top is still inside out all right so just grab a thread thread your needle nice and close once again you're going to go across the top on the inside of your work which is we are actually on the inside of our work anyway find some stitching somewhere and if you want you can actually do that knot that I showed you I might do that pop it in some thread right there pull it through not all the way just part of the way pop your needle back in the loop and do the little knot okay and that way you know that's secure it's never going to come undone however now you're going to go across some stitches and just split those stitches yeah just check the front make sure you can't see the needle and you can't see the needle just pull that loop through like so not too tight like I just did or your shirt will buckle there and then just go back the other way give it a cut and guess what guys you're going to do exactly the same on the other side now I've already done my other side off air a moment ago and I weaved it in and you can actually see a little bit of a knot there but that's okay it's all inside out so it doesn't matter all right now your job is to head off on your own and do the other side and then meet me back here and we'll talk about the very next step Alrighty guys, now that we have done our shoulder seams, now I did weave in a couple of ends, just don't look at that, <laughs> we need to focus on our side seams. Two things I found with the side seams, one, I already did one side just to see how it would come out and it was real tricky because we had a lot of chains along here. So you have to make sure you marry up each row in their rows yeah like your four with your four your two with your two and so on all the way through now that's one thing you need to focus on the other thing is well you don't really need to focus on measurements okay I'm going to give you some measurements and hopefully you can go by those and see how they go on you but let's take for argument's sake my body I'm kind of <laughs> large in width yes and I'm short from my the top of my shoulder down to my waist or my hip or whatever measurement your chest measurement whatever I'm relatively short from here to say the chest measurement yeah so uh, if you are a large but a smaller in width that's going to change your where you put your stitch marker as well so the deal is and this is the way I found it I can't get this I'm trying to bring this out further I can't the deal is to pop stitch markers in uh, your top give it a quarter of the way down your top on one side a quarter of the way down your top on the other I popped one stitch marker each on the bottom as well just to you know give it a tiny little bit of shape it won't give it proper shape then try it on because like I said I'm happy to give you the measurements which I will in a minute but I would try that on because everyone's measurement is different now where mine fits is about let me show you all right Mine was oh, from memory. Let's do the whole thing so I can see. I think it was 24 point something. It was 24 centimeters from the top, which is nine and a half inches. Let me get a close up for you. Oh, it's too close, is it? No, that's all right. So it was nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters down. But I gave myself an extra, I don't know, five, six inches, uh, five, six inches, five or six centimeters, which is about two and a half inches. So I gave myself a little bit extra because I wanted more of a gap there an extra gap so it's it's actually quite open under my arms so really if you wanted to get pedantic small to medium go down to eight inches or 20 centimeters yeah and I'm giving you lots of leeway here as well 
So medium to large will be your 24 to 9 inches, 24 centimetres, 9 and a half inches, sorry. And your extra large and bigger just drop down to about, I don't know, 29 centimetres, 11 and a half inches, that kind of thing. Just allowing yourself lots and lots of leeway under the arm. If you didn't want your massive gap under the arm, just bring it up, you know, try it on. Pop your stitch marker in on those measurements that I said, try it on. And if you think, wait a minute, that's a massive gap under the arm, I'm going to bring it up. Or, well, hey, it's not enough gap, let's bring it down. So try it on. Use the measurements if you like, but try it on. When you have your perfect measurement for your body, pop your stitch marker there, pop one down the bottom and get ready for this part right here. All right, so let's grab the needle. I threaded it off air because I'm struggling with this cotton. <laughs> I think the needle's a bit small and <laughs> the cotton is too big, but you know, I'm struggling with it. All right, so my needle has been threaded. No, not again. I don't knot my threads. I actually weave it in at the end because I don't have like having big knots, especially under the arms. Nothing worse than wearing a top and there's this massive knot under your arm. Now, what I did before, and I did struggle a lot with the um, making sure everything matched. So what I ended up doing, it was a little fiddly for me, but it did help me a lot. At the end, well, let me just show you a close up first so you know what you're doing. Let's say you've got yours in your stitch and I'll show you the stitches that I'm putting it in so you know where it is. If that's the top of your stitch, that's, if you put your stitch marker in the middle right there, then just pop it on the top of the stitch through the two threads there and two threads on the opposite side. And that is where your needle is going to go, right? Then I, because I found it very difficult, literally did that every second row or something to make sure that I didn't, like even that, even now trying to get that in there, to make sure that I didn't go off track, which is really easy to do, right? Because it's a tricky, oh, I'm gonna find some stitches there. It's not like here where you had straight edges and you had your, your, your um, chains and your double crochets to go into. Here you only have chains and it can get tricky, all right? But make sure that you are going in the opposite side. There's your two and there's your two. There's your seven and there's your seven. There's your four and there's your four. If you go off track a little bit, take it undone because we haven't knotted it. You can take it undone, re-thread it and then continue again. But I actually found it better for me. You don't have to do this. It's just a little tip that every second row, I actually put the stitch marker in a top stitch right there. Again, not necessary. If you are confident, you don't have to do that. But I, I did struggle, okay? And I'm always a confident person. Not so much with sewing needles because I always get pinned <laughs> every time. Every time I use one. But let's hope this one's not very sharp, this one, so that's good. <laughs> what you do is you pop your, <laughs> you like that? Pop your needle through both sides, all right? Where you put your stitch marker in, take that stitch marker out, that is your first stitch. Don't pull your thread all the way through because we haven't knotted it. Leave a little tail for weaving. But what we're going to do is go back, just this one stitch, back into the same stitch, yeah? And pull it three quarters of the way through, or a little bit more, leaving that little loop there, popping your needle through the loop, so you can give yourself a little bit of a knot. Notice how I'm holding the tail while I do that. And now, when you finish the end of the row, you can weave this tail in across this way. All right, don't, don't weave it upwards, weave it downwards into your work, like we did with our little tail here. All right, so now, the easy job, no, the hard job, <laughs> that was the easy job, the hard job is going across the row. You need to actually find a couple of threads on one side and a couple of threads on the other making sure you're not going to the space because it'll leave massive gaps everywhere you are going through two threads on one side and maybe two on the other now look at this one this is real tricky i'm actually splitting yarn there just to get in um but don't split yarn because then that'll be noticed okay you're going through there we go two loops there and two loops on a stitch on the other side very tricky but you know what once you get the flow of it you get the flow of it Okay, and go to the other side, find two loops there, find two loops in there. Some of your loops will be loose, like this one's a really loose stitch here. But don't go in the space, you're going into your loops. All right, 
a tad tricky, but not completely difficult, okay? So that's what I want you to do. That's the, the awkward bit. Complete your awkward bit <laughs> all the way until you get to. And let me pop a stitch marker right at the end where you can actually go into. All right, so that's, get a close up for you. That's your last two stitches, yeah? And this is your last two stitches. I would pop, oh, don't throw it all over the place. I would pop my stitch marker in right. Uh, no, we won't. Pop it in the top loop, top two loops of that last stitch there. And some top two loops on the other side. And just, you know, when we get to the end, we'll play with it. And don't stress if you're a tiny little bit off. Um, if you're really worried about it, take your needle out, unthread a few stitches and then go back and go forward again. All right, that's what you need to do, guys. Just get to the end of that row there, right at that stitch marker with your last few stitches. And I will meet you there in a moment. All righty, guys, let's get a little bit of a close up right here. And there we go. This is where I am at the moment. There's my little stitch marker. Okay, I'm just going to take that stitch marker out now so you can see exactly where I am. All right, so where I am is I've got the last three chains there and the last three on that side. So pop your needle in the top one and in the top one on the other side and pull that loop through. And then you're going straight into the second last one if you can get in there. And the second last one is really tricky it was I found it really tricky I don't know maybe it was just me and then there's the last stitch and then there's your last stitch with your thread hanging off now it's a little tricky because it's it's there but I would like to get into there as well so we're going to go there for now all right now if you look carefully that's still very loose so I would like to go right into that knot right there and then right into the bottom of the stitch again there. Just pull that through. And again, we want to make a knot, don't we? So go right back into the stitching again. Wherever that was, right there. Start to pull it through and pop it through your thread like so. And then give it a tug. Now, your job is to, guess what? Weave in this end. You've done your knot already find some threads at the back that you can actually weave into when i say the back just your work that you just did and weave it through like so all right a little bit more why well because i'm pedantic you don't have to if you don't want to <laughs> but do go back go back the other direction so give yourself a little bit more protection um, so this doesn't come out in the wash. It won't now that you have. See how I split the yarn? I don't just go through the stitch. I literally split the yarn. Make sure your work is correct before splitting because I'm telling you now that this is not going to come undone. <laughs> this is why I do the splitting. People say, don't do it. It's not good. It's a no-no. Well, it is a no-no, but, you know, it does look better. All righty, guys. So your job now is to actually do the opposite side and then meet me back here in just a moment and we will work on the neck edge that's our last side edge done and our tops done now we're going to work on our collar but what you need to do now we're still inside out here yeah because you can see how thick that is on the top and how kind of flat that is inside now we need to turn our work in the right side or through to the right side if you will What's the front and what's the back of your work? It doesn't matter because both sides are exactly the same. But I want you to do is right here, what I want you to do is face your um, neck edge towards you. Remember when we did 10 clusters in here, you might have done 12, you might have done eight, you might have done 14, you might have done six, it doesn't matter, all right? Whatever you did, Find your center cluster. Now I've been playing with mine so I can see my center cluster there. But let's say we did the 10. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, and that's these, I'm counting these two double crochets, right? So we count from there. See that? Whoops, right there. <laughs> Not even in front there. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the center of your um, back. 
okay now there's two stitches there we're going to pop our stitch marker in the second stitch and I did I was playing with it before how you can see all my little loose stitches there they'll tighten up in a minute all right pop your hook in that stitch marker stitch and now you can take out your stitch marker that will be the center of your back okay uh, grab a thread pop it over your hook pull the loop through you can pass your thread forward if you like so you can lock it into place and that's chain whoops whoops don't lose your chains one two and three grab your stitch marker again and pop it in that top stitch the last one we just created like so yeah in the next just pop your tail up the back now in that next space I'm actually going to crochet over that once I'm going to pop one double crochet in that space and off you go with one double crochet all right now this is going to help decrease in this round okay in your next two stitches you're going to pop one in the first and one in the second yarn over your hook in the first and in the second it's all double crochets nothing's changed except you're only putting one double crochet in your space every space you come to is one double crochet and every stitch you come to is a double crochet in each one and two one double crochet in the space one each into your next stitch well two stitches I should say now we will just keep doing that until we get to the corner now we're, we're very close now so I'm not going to pop this on fast or anything for you but one into each stitch am I going too fast sorry guys and one I'm getting excited now because it's at the end of the tutorial and one into your space so one each into the stitch one and two and one into the space now just being weary here this is the shoulder seam now that we're coming to I'm sorry it's the neck edge seam so you're popping your one in that space now here's where it changes a little bit you're popping two into the first space you come to one and two and you're popping so now you're going to come to a space on each row right this is your double crochet rows so now you're popping one into the first big space just one and two into your next big space one and two one into the next big space two into your next big space one and two well they're not really large spaces are they they're sort of semi-large all right now if you're anything like me you'll have one more there if you haven't don't worry about it just continue with the pattern one and then two into the next space we're jumping over all of this okay if that's what you have that's the top of my sleeve right I'm sorry that's the top of my shoulder the seam line and I've done one in that one so I need to do two in the next one one into your next two into your next turn your turn your piece around because it's getting a little fiddly there isn't it let's bring that out the way now we did two there so we're going to do one into the next and oh this is really close isn't it sorry guys two into the next Oh, we're nearly at the end of the shoulder part or neck edge part there's a second one one into your next doesn't matter if the space is really big it's okay and two now I've got a thread here I'm going to tighten it up a little bit and do my two double crochets over it but we're going to weave that into the double crochets later like we've been doing all along yeah and then you might find that here it runs into two double crochets maybe I've done a chain space wrong it doesn't matter I know I've done two there but I still need to do two double crochets one in each of these stitches so one and two so whether I've done something wrong there is another story or whether that's how yours lands as well all right in the end we are still doing across the front there or the back no the front now 
one into the space and one each into our stitches. All right, so this hasn't changed at all. It's just on the sides when we are doing our corner section that might change a little bit, all right? One into the first and one each into your next stitch. And I'm just gonna speed this up until we get to the next side, which is right there. I'll just pop this on fast for you and uh, off we go. Alrighty guys, I just had to check my work because I thought I've messed up a little bit, but I haven't. That's the joy of when you're doing something like this and it closes up, you think you've missed a stitch when you really haven't. It's just tightening up your work, which is a, which is what we want. That's where we're headed, okay? Um, now let's just have a quick look. I've done one each into my last two double crochets. I need to do one into the space right there and then two into the side space one and two and then one into the next space because we're on the sides of our work now so you won't find stitches just have to remember where you're putting your one and your two two into the next one into the next two into your next one into your next and now we're at the uh, sleeve edge or the top uh, shoulder edge we've got one in there now we've got to put two into the next big space so we're jumping over all of that and popping two in there that will really close up your piece and make it nice and tight around your neck so it's not falling off your shoulders okay one into your next two into your next one and two, one into your next, two into the next, okay, and coming up against a little thread here, one into your next, which is that big space, and then you're going to pop two into the next space, one and two and guess what you still need to pop your tail at the back there put one each in the next two stitches like so i'm sorry i'm not even looking through the lens so i don't know what's happening <laughs> that's what happens when you're not really focused i'm focused on my work and not looking through the lens okay one into your space two into one each into the next two stitches i'm not going to pop this on fast because we're nearly there one into the next. We do have one more row to do here though, so don't get too excited. <laughs> one each into the next. Oh, do you like that? Don't get too excited. <laughs> and one into your space. Whoops, one into your space. And one each into the next two stitches. All right, and one into the space just before our stitch marker. I will put this closer. All right, so one into the space just before our stitches there. Now, remember, we started in our second stitch, so we have to put one double crochet into that stitch there. Pop your, your hook in like normal, do your double crochet, and that last stitch is done. Then you slip stitch into that stitch with a stitch marker in and pull it through to your loop on your hook. Remove your stitch marker for a moment. You will need that in a second. Okay, from here, once you've tightened your stitch, you need to pop a single crochet, let me get in frame here, you need to pop a single crochet into that same stitch that you're in. And a single crochet is just popping your hook in the same stitch, pull up a loop, mm, nice tight stitch there, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, that's it. Grab your stitch marker, mm, 
and pop it in the tops, top two loops of your stitch. And here's the hard part. I'm kidding, it's the best part. Single crochets in every stitch. How naughty am I? All the way across your row. Too easy, I'm sorry. Did I forget to tell you a single crochet again? <laughs> pop your hook in the stitch, pull up a loop, two loops, yarn over, pull through two. In your next stitch, pull up a loop, two loops, yarn over, pull through two. Super duper easy. This is actually super duper easy. I love this row. It is a completion row and it will complete the top of your neck edge. Then we'll tighten it up that little tiny bit more. So your job now, guys, too easy, is to continue. Oh, I twisted the whole top. Continue with your single crochets all the way around in every stitch you come to. And when you get to your corners, you won't even notice a corner. You'll just be going into every stitch. All right. So single crochet into every stitch. Get back to this stitch marker right here or a couple of stitches before and I will meet you there in a moment. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of our row and I've left two single crochets to do and I'll give you a nice close up so you can have a look. And there you go. So I've got your one and your two left. So single into that second last one, single into your last one. And you've got your two together like that they're sitting right next to each other so you know that's your last stitch there yeah so you're going to slip stitch into that last very last stitch of your neck edge what yes the very very last stitch chain one or pull up a loop check your work before you do this because we are going to cut it because we're done with the collar that's it that is all you needed to do for your neck edge however guess what you're going to weave that in end those two ends in later turn your work upside down literally upside down that is the bottom of your work there's your neck that's the bottom grab your hook now find the back yeah of your work and you know it can be anywhere it doesn't matter or you can do what I want to do which is not work on the back I want to work literally on a side and the reason is it just hides that thread. You know what? That's got a thread there. Has it got a thread over here? Or have I weaved that in already? I've weaved that in. Find a, a thread that's already weaved in. If it's not weaved in, don't stress. Now, this is um, your first space. Now, in these little tiny spaces here, I want you to pop, there's these tiny little ones right there, pop your hook into that first space. Yep. Grab your thread. And you're going to start with a single crochet in that space there. Yep. So, Pop your hook in, pull your little loop forward, chain one, and then a single crochet in the same space, like so. Then you're going to jump, I might even crochet over that tail, you're going to jump over all of this right here, which is your seam line, yeah, and do a single crochet in that very next space, like so. Now what we're going to do in that space, we're going to put three double crochets. So you've got your yarn over your hook, you're doing your double crochets right over the space. One, two, and three. And that's it for the space. So your double crochets here, your two, in the middle of those two, you're putting a single crochet. So pop your hook in, pull a loop through, two loops, yarn over, pull through two. In your next big space, three double crochets. Now being careful not to make your first double crochet too loose. So there's one, two, and three. In between your two stitches, a single. Next space, three double crochets. All right. I'm hoping you're getting the picture here. The pattern is very easy. It's a two stitch pattern all the way across, if you think about it. One stitch will be your single crochet in between your two double crochets, right there. Your next stitch will be your three double crochets in your big space. Off we go. Again, making sure you're not doing that first stitch too loose, your first double crochet, okay? And the reason is, and I'll show you, Right there, you can see it all sitting into, into right, in the right place. Over here, 
I made this one a little tiny bit loose. It's not that loose. It's a little tiny bit loose. And if you make that too loose, you're going to have like this little gap there and you don't want that. All right. But that's it, guys. Super duper easy for this row. Single crochet in between your two double crochets and three double crochets. <laughs> Let's try it again. Three <laughs> double crochets. Hello. In your big space. What? Super easy. Guess what? You're not going to watch me do this. You're going to head off on your own. Oh, I didn't put a stitch marker in, guys. Go right back to that very first stitch. Now, there's your three double crochets. There's that single crochet. And your very first single crochet with these two loops right here. All right. It won't matter too much when we get to the end. But there's your three. And there's your one. And there's your other one. And there's no more there. Now, before I tell you to go head off on your own, what I want you to do is not head off on your own yet. What I want you to do is to get to the very first side. So do your sets until you get to the very first side. Um, and let me grab a stitch marker for you and we'll pop a stitch marker where I want you to stop. That's your last space where you can put three double crochets. And then you've got these little, there's your, your seam line and these two little spaces. Stop when you get to that very last space right there and I will meet you up in a moment. Alrighty guys, alright. Now I asked you to stop just before this, uh, these two little sections here. We're actually in your very last space. So let's, big space, let's take out our yellow stitch marker and do three double crochets in your big space like normal. Okay, so one. See how I've done that too loose? This is why I asked you not to do them too loose, but there you go, I did it. So you do your one, two, and three. All right, so what you have now is your seam line there and these tiny little spaces here. Again, what I want you to do, which is very similar to how we started the row, single crochet into your first space, skip over your seam line, single crochet into that second space there or the next space and then you're just doing your normal three double crochets into your space one two and three and you now have passed one side seam or actually almost the second one oh i nearly put a double crochet in there and again single crochet into your between your two stitches three whoops three double crochets into every large space across your row super duper easy now your job my dears is to continue along this side and then get to let's say i'll tell you what we'll do there's our stitch marker but get to the space i'll show you a close up there's your stitch marker don't get to your last space, get to your second last space right there. So I'm going to pop the yellow one there and just get to the second last space because this area can be a tad confusing, all right? So get to your second last space and I will meet you there in a moment. All righty, guys. Now I asked you to get to that stitch marker there, all right? Now the reason is, we'll take the stitch marker out. We won't do it yet. The reason is, remember how we did the seam line on the other side where we did one single on one side and then we jumped and did a single on the next and then we did our cluster sets? Well, that's exactly what we've already done. I just wanted you to understand that when you got here, okay? So really, let's just put our normal three double crochets in that space that I told you not to do it, but put it in there, like so. Do your single crochet between your stitches here, like normal. Now, that's the stitch we want to slip stitch into. So you need to put three double crochets in this last space. And off you go with your three double crochets. One, two, whoops, and uh, three. All right, then all you're doing is slip stitching into the top of this guy right here. So slip stitch in there, nice tight slip stitch. Pull up a loop, check your work before doing this part. If you've checked it like I have, you can give your 
thread a cut and guess what guys I hate to have to admit this but there's no other rose <laughs> I just wanted to make it sound naughty how naughty am I you're done yay super duper gorgeous and the the base row is a simple base row but it still gives it a gorgeous look yeah like that a very simple simple gorgeous look but neat and it, it will now not twist and bend and whatever else have you because it was only a few stitches chains there wasn't it really if you think about it and here you have done your uh, border row for the back so that's the back that we were working on so really your front is there all right that's it you're done yay give yourself a pat on the back um thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys well pretty much already do for me and don't forget to join us on our lives guys we have lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoon and 10 a.m saturday morning melbourne australia time and this is where we get to choose all our color combinations that you see here on the channel now don't forget guys you still need to weave in this end and you still need to weave in a few other little ends along the way. But in the meantime, all I want to say right now is, firstly, check this out and ciao for now.